Well, our player, as I said, uh, we're, we're joined by our next guest here. Um, fabulous lady boxer just recently captured uh, the WBC Diamond uh, Championship. So we're going to welcome to the show right now, Ava Knight. Ava, welcome to the Jeff Mayweather Radio Show. You're on with uh, myself, Jeff Mayweather, and Carla J. Hey, hey, thanks for having me. Hey, Ava, Thanks for joining us. Welcome. Welcome. What a time. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Well, well, thanks for joining us. I know Jeff was kind of a little hesitant to, to bring you on the show because last week you caused him to have an accident and, and he was a little aggravated, but but I, I calmed him down and, and, and we got you on the show, so appreciate you joining us. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, actually, yeah, last week we had a uh, – Ava wasn't able to join us. We had to cancel the show last minute as Jeff got a little fender bender here and, and unfortunately we couldn't go on the show. So we got past that and, and thanks for joining us this week. Um yeah, first of all, congratulations on your victory uh, a couple weeks ago against uh, Barbie there. Uh, a great, great win for you, and uh, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. Big win for me. <laughs> so so let me ask you about this. You know, you're, you're going against a fighter who, who basically had more consecutive title defenses than you have fights. Um, you know, going in, were you a little nervous going in against someone that, that experienced? Uh, you know, Personally, no. Um, I wasn't scared of the experience. I think I was more scared of the altitude than anything. Because I, I already knew inside that, that I had this fight won. You know, I felt that I was the better the better fighter. You know, she's great. She was a great champion for a long time. But I knew that I had what it took. You know, I was younger and stronger and faster. You know, I, I was just determined. Yeah. So how did the altitude affect you during the fight, you know, if at all? And, and how did you train for it going in? Did you go to Big Bear or anything like that? Yeah, you know, the altitude affected me probably in the sixth, seventh round. Um, you know, honestly, I don't think you can get used to altitude unless you stick with it for about a month. And uh, we were up in Big Bear for about two weeks, you know. Um, it was fortunate mostly let us train up there. And we got some good sparring with, you know, Kalisha West and Becky Garcia. Um, and then going up and down from there, I had to go home and then go to Mexico City for a, a press conference and then back to the Bay Area and then back to Mexico City. So we were sort of up and down, and I didn't get to keep the high altitude straight. But mm -hmm. even even that little bit just, you know, helped me out. Um, I was able to keep everything going till the sixth round. And e even with a little bit of that, that tough breathing and that muscle burn, I would still be able to pull pull everything out. Right. And so, Jeff, let me bring you in here on that. Um, you have any experience as far as training fight, uh, fighters for the high altitude, and, and what's normally your strategy going into a fight like that? Well, I mean, basically, the altitude really on the stage in your body, probably about, at the most, seven days. So if she came down before the seven days, to be honest, it didn't help her at all being up in Big Bear. Oh, yeah. So, but, you know, it definitely, if you come down, like, maybe five days, well, about five days, you're, you're good. Five days, or the, the more days you stay up there, closer to coming down, then it's like, it's phenomenal. I mean, you'll be able to go, you know, if she was fighting 10 rounds, she can fight 20 rounds. I mean, I've been, I've been in Big Bear quite a few times, trained up there a lot of times, and when you come down, you know, um, the altitude is in your body, and when I mean, you come down to a lower altitude, I mean, it's almost like you're like superhuman. But it only lasts in your body five to seven days. And so I don't know, like I said, I don't know when she came down, so that's probably why, you know, it didn't fit in the body for nothing but six rounds. Okay. A little off topic, but what's the advantage of someone like Miguel Cotto going and training up there right now for his fight in New York City? Just because, you know, does it help your endurance even if you're not fighting at a higher altitude? No, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help him a great deal if he goes up. Because, I mean, New York is probably, you know, just above sea level. And, I mean, you go in the build there, you know, I think the altitude is like five to 6,000 feet. I'm not really sure exactly what it is, but I know that it's really high. And when you come down, like I said, I mean, your energy is, I mean, it's like it's amazing. You're like, you're like a superhuman. Right. So, Eva, 
let me ask you this. You know, you're in Mexico City. It, it, it's her country. Um, she's coming off of two split decision victories. You didn't get the knockout. You go to the decision. Were you a little bit worried, you know, before they, they made a decision that you might have been on the wrong end of that due to a little hometown cooking? Well, it, you know, I think every fighter knows in a fight whether they lost or not. And, uh, you know, after that fight was done, I knew I had lost the fight. And the worst thing that I thought was that could happen is they give her a draw. And, and I just couldn't see it happening. And, and, you know, we had our promoter on the side, but we had two other promoters against us. And it was really hard for me to think that they were going to be fair. But, you know, at the end of the day, they were fair. Um, you know, the, one of them had 7-3 to three and one had it 6-4, to four and I had it 9-1. to one. But... You know, it just it, it it felt right. You know, they gave me the right answer, the, the, the right answer. They gave me the right the right service. Well, yeah, you know, Jeff. You know, with, with Celestino is, is well aware. You know, being in in the in the opponent's hometown, sometimes yeah, fair doesn't always matter. If if you, if you don't get the knockout, sometimes yeah. you're on the wrong end of that. Just because uh, for some reason uh, they they think if you're in the hometown, they deserve the, they deserve the decision. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know, it was really hard, and um, I really did try and knock her out, but she's really tough, and, you know, that's why she's been a champion for so long. <laughs> All right. Now, now, let me ask you this question. This is, is kind of interesting as I was, uh, y you know, going over your, your stuff here. Um, you, you've had so few, fight, so few fights, you know, 13 professional fights, yet unlike most people who, you know, kind of start off, you know, the, the talented fighters who are supposed to be somebody, they, they, they're padding their records, fighting a bunch of cans right away, and, and you know, not really fighting anybody of note. Uh, you've done the exact opposite. You know, you, you fought Kalisha West two, two times, Anna Marie Torres, uh, Susanna Vasquez. Um, you, you know, just in, in 14 fights, you fought a ton of former world champions and potential Hall of Famers. Um, was that something that you... You set, you set out to do, and if so, why was that your strategy? Uh, you know, when, when we first decided to turn pro, it was because we weren't getting enough fight. And, uh, you know, my former trainer and I had realized that, you know, I was already good enough to to be up there. I had watched the, the girls that I had been fighting, you know, the ones that were already on TV or had their, their fights on the Internet. So when we, when we came into the game, we said, we're just going to take the fight. And, and that's exactly what we did. You know, I kept up really fast. And, you know, it was difficult, but, you know, at the same time, it, it taught me a lot. And, you know, not being able to be a prospect because I was a woman, you know, I, w I wasn't fortunate enough to have fights handed to me. So I feel that, you know, even with my record, it, it just shows what kind of fighter I am. Now, now, Jeff, have you ever seen anybody, or can you think of anybody offhand? I, I believe, and I could be wrong here, Ava, but you fought six, either uh, six uh, former champions, right, in your first 14 fights. Is that right? Mm hmm Yeah. So, Jeff, have you ever seen another fighter that's, that's fought so much uh, top-quality competition right away and early in their career? Um, the only person I can even think of that done something like that was, Probably my brother Roger. I mean, of course, he was a fighting world champion, but, you know, he fought his very first fight, his first fight. His big pro baby was an eight rounder, and he fought a guy with 19 fights. And and then after that, of course, he fought, you know, he fought um, even bigger names. But, you know, um, other than him, no, I didn't see nothing even close to it. Yeah. So, so Ava, you know, you went in this fight, even though you had fought tough competition, you were still considered the underdog, basically because of the experience thing. Um, you know, and, and even still, that there's, you know, you get a lot of butt. You know, Ava's great, but she doesn't have the experience, but she hasn't been around, but she's still young. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think that this victory, you know, like the going down to Mexico City, beating her in her backyard, do you think that's going to give you a little more respect than, than maybe from maybe some people that haven't given it to you up until this point? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's going to give me a lot of respect. A lot of people will tell you if you beat, you beat someone with that kind of score in their own hometown in a different country, you know, you, you had to have beat them fair and square. So, and, and, and you know, the one thing I, I realized, you know, in Mexico they love their fighters and, and they'll boo you if, if they don't think you won or even if, if they thought it was a close fight. And, and I didn't hear any boos after that fight, so... I got my respect to Mexico for fighting uh, Mariana, and, you know, 
it, it's unfortunate that the United States didn't get to see it. You know, that, that should have been on HBO, but, you know, hopefully I'm getting my respect to the United States as a great woman fighter. So, Jeff, I'm going to put you on the spot here with a little trivia. Um, she captured the, uh, the WBC Diamond Belt. Um, can you explain to the people what the Diamond Belt is? Are you talking to me? Yeah, you're the only Jeff, I think. <laughs> I have no idea what the Diamond Belt is. I know that Floyd won it also, but I don't. I have no idea what it is. All right, well, yeah, you know, you mentioned Floyd. You, you know, Ava, you're in extremely uh, select company. Uh, Manny Pacquiao, Floyd Mayweather, Bernard Hopkins, Sergio Martinez, Nanito Denair, and uh, Anna Maria Torres are the only other ones that have won the Diamond Belt. So so go ahead for those like Jeff and, you know, and I'll, you know, myself that, that aren't quite sure what the Diamond Belt is. Explain that, how it's given it out, and, and why. Well, from what I've read about it, um, you know, the Diamond Belt, the Diamond Belt is, is, is the contest between the best of the best. Um, you only win it once. I don't know how, you know, if they're going to give it out again, maybe in a different era. But I, I guess it just means you're the best of the best in the weight class in the time, in the time period. So, I, I, you know, that's right. the best I can put it. Well, well, certainly, uh, you know, considering who's held it before, obviously it, it shows, yeah, it's not given out lightly. But it does, you know, it, it does seem kind of strange as far as, you know, the, the confusion with the belt. I, you know, I guess so the uh, the WBC regular title, which she held, is now vacant, but yet you can still keep your IBF belt, correct? Yeah, you know, um, you know, with her losing, losing the fight, she lost her world title belt, but I hear that she's fighting for it again. But we had a little feud before the fight with the WBC and the IBF. You know, they didn't want to unify. And, you know, I wanted to respect the IBF for everything they've done, and, and I've been fighting for them for the past year. So, you know, we decided that we were going to stay with the IBF, and I think that's the reason why we weren't put – we didn't put the, the world title on the line. Okay. Well, explain, you know, who's next for you. You know, a lot of talk about uh, Melissa McMorrow, which would be nice. You guys could fight, you know – little hometown there, Northern California thing. Um, is she mm -hmm. something that you have your eye on? You know, obviously you two fight. Uh, that, that would basically, uh, you know, create a, you know, a dominant fighter in a, in the weight class. She holds the WBA, WBO, WIBF title. So basically, you know, the winner of that would be the, the king of the division. Is that someone that you're looking at as possibly next, or, or do you have someone else in mind, or do you not really know at this point? Uh, well, I don't really know what's coming next right now. Um, right now I'm at the top of the – top of the food chain so you know I feel like she should be trying to see what what she can get out of me and right now I, I don't feel her she her as a threat I know she's a great champion and she's doing a great job right now but but um you know seeing her in the amateurs and knowing where she's at and, and what she's doing um you know I she, she's going to be a great fight but uh, you know I, I see other competitors um ranked a little higher than her uh she beat the German girl which you know, at that time, I was hoping that I was going to be able to go down there and knock her out. But, you know, she was fortunate to do that. But, I, you know, I hope Melissa keeps winning so we can make that big fight happen. And, you know, and we can bring it to the United States because I'm pretty sure me and her could put on a great show. She's got a little bit of confidence to her, Jeff. She kind of reminds me of of, of uh, your nephew a little bit. <laughs> no, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> no, I, no, I, I always... I always try and keep it like, you know, I really don't try and be cocky. Uh, I, I feel like that's a real bad trait. I don't have pride in what I do. You know, I, I love what I do, and, and I'm confident in what I do, and I think that, that's what separates me from a lot of different other fighters. Well, you know, it's certainly impressive. Like I said, you know, in 14 fights, you, you fought basically, the you know, the top of the food chain already. Uh, you know, a lot of people have to be considered – you know, number three pound per pound. I saw a little thing on your Facebook wall. They have you number five pound per pound in Northern California behind uh, some some guy boxers there, and uh, that's going to be pretty cool for you that, that that you know people are starting to take notice, and you know at such a young age you've accomplished so much already. You know, it, it, it's it's got to be hard not to toot your horn a little bit because you've accomplished so much. Yeah. So the so the the other thing, you know, you see some people. I, I know me at St. John's done it once. Uh, Jessica Rakosi done a little bit. Um, MMA, have you, is that something you ever thought about? It, it really seems to be hot with the women right now. Is that something you would ever consider in the future trying at some point? Uh, you know, um, 
I have a little story, I guess. You know, I, I, I'm really not an MMA fan. I really, I really do support all the women that are doing it, like Jessica Rakoski. Um, you know, I actually watched that last fight, and, and I'm just going to, like, tell the story of it. You know, we turned it on. Everybody made a big deal about it, and they were coming on TV, and, and I think the two fights before weren't all that, but, you know, I think one ended up tapping out and one got knocked out. But I watched that fight and, and the girl she was going in with, and I think it, what, it lasted about 20 seconds or so. It, <laughs> And the girl got an arm bar, and you know how you just watch a boxing fight and someone gets knocked out and you're like, oh. I, I watched that fight with her, and once she got that arm bar and the girl tapped out, I was almost like, that's, that's it? <laughs> you know, and, and the reaction to me was just so different, and, and I just, I respect them. You know, it's a totally different sport, but I, I just couldn't see myself doing that. Well, I think Jeff, you know, Jeff's working with some MMA guys, but uh, I, I think he kind of shared your sentiment. You know, he, he, he's, he's getting a little warmer to this sport, but I, I know he prefers the, the knockout to a, you know, a, a rear naked choke or, a, or an arm bar, right, Jeff? Yes, I like the, um, I like the sidebar. <laughs> sidebar? Or the tripod. Yeah, so, so you can see where, where fighters like uh, Roy Nelson and King Mo get their get all their talent from working with Jeff. So, so then, Ava, Ava, you know, you, so you said you're not, you know, too interested in MMA going forward. Um, what do you think that the, the future of women's boxing is? I, I mean, the one, you know, we had it had a run for a while when you had Layla Ali and Christy Martin and, and that kind of thing. Then it kind of disappeared for a long time. However, you know, I. I do see a lot of buzz starting to build, you know, and especially around people like you, you know, young, attractive fighters that are really making their marks. And what do you think the future of, of female boxing is, and, and do you see it having, a, you know, another uh, another push? Uh, you know, I think it's going to get better and better as time goes. I think right now it's still going to stay where it's at. Um, I don't feel promoters feel that there's money in it yet, you know, even with Clarissa Shields winning. Um, she's still not turning pro, so, you know, that, that doesn't help the professionals out one bit um, because I guess, you know, the eye has been on the amateurs since, since the Olympics, which is great, you know, I, we all that's where we all start out. But, you know, seeing that only one woman was able to do it and none of the men were able to, I think it's, it's turning heads away from boxing in America. But, you know, yeah. as, as being a champion right now, it's just sad to see that, you know, seeing such a great young woman win the Olympics and then have no professionals that have been doing it for so long, you know, since Layla Ali left and, and just blew the torch and, and women just went downhill to see it come up and, and nobody throw a bone to the women who are champions now that have been doing a great job. It's just it's just hard for me to swallow and, and, and that's why I've been fighting in Mexico so much because they actually care about boxing, but it's hard to see that the United States hasn't stepped up yet. Uh, yeah, not only Clarissa Shields, like you mentioned, but also, you know, she didn't win, but Marlon Esparza, who got, you know, quite a bit of mainstream publicity, also she didn't go pro. So, yeah, that, that definitely probably hurts the sport as far as, you know, not getting uh, the mainstream media, you know, focusing on them and therefore on the sport as a whole as a professional uh, fighting. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, maybe maybe you're the person to, to bring it to them. But like I said, you know, you seem to have a lot of personality. You're obviously incredibly talented. So, uh, you know, I, and like anything, I always need to be a good rivalry. So maybe we can find someone for you to, you know, have some good fights with and and pique the interest. Um, so do you find do you find in general that it's 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 mostly American and that when you when you go out of the country that that women's boxing is is more appreciated? Yeah, you know, going to Mexico, you you think it'd be like going to a foreign country, but it's like when when women go over there who fight, it's like they just love us. They just give us the men are even better. Uh, you know, we put on great fights, but you know, we might only do two minutes, but we go out there and, and throw blows for two minutes, and that's what they like to see. Um, and, and you know, and we get our respect there. And coming back to the United States. Like we get thrown under the bus, you know. Not that I don't like, you know. I like that nobody knows who I am when I go somewhere. You know, I, I can't take that for granted yet. But um, you know, but just getting our respect as fighters, you know, we've got all these people who are getting named pound for pound and getting in ring magazines. 
but, you know, who are they mentioning in, in, in the women, you know? They're still only calling out the names that were 10 years ago, and, and they don't know who the, the women coming up right now are. Right. Jeff, we were able to talk about this a little bit a couple months ago when we had Marine Shea on, but um, what, if anything, do you think that women's boxing can do as far as sparking interest in the American public? Well, I mean, they're on the right track by even having women in the Olympics. And I think that that's going to be, you know, unless you have another famous name coming to the women's sport of boxing, women's boxing is going to be what it is. I mean, because women's boxing to America is just like women's basketball. You know, it's not, you know, people are not going to go, you know, gung-ho and go spend a lot of money watching women fighting. They're not going to do it. So it's one of those situations in which, you know, through the Olympics, people will get a chance to understand that women are just as, you know, just as talented as men. And then once that happens and once you get, you get, you know, you get a, um, an Olympian that, you know, like you said, I mean, whoever won the Olympics, if, if they're not turning pro, that's hurting women's boxing. But, you know, the one thing is that that's what you want. That's, that's going to be the driving force of, of women's boxing because they're going to be able to see that women from America, women from wherever. I mean, they can actually fight. So until that happens, you know, women's boxing is still gonna, it's not going to flourish in the U.S. Right. You don't have any illegitimate daughters running around out there with the Mayweather last name, do you, Jeff? <laughs> no, I got no daughters. No daughters, no sons, no nothing. Man, where's, where's, where's the little Mayweather I can call out, you know? You guys, yeah. daughter I can call out and I can make some money. Yeah. None of them decided to box. <laughs> hey, Emma, another thing I was interested in, you know, uh, a lot was made about about you and, and, and Barbie, the appearances. I mean, does that bother you at all when when some people focus more on, on your appearance and, and whether or not you look good as opposed to your talent? Because, I mean, you know, some people that do turn in, from a guy's standpoint, do just turn in, tune in, uh, you know, based on the looks. Well, you know, if getting pretty is going to get people to watch me fight, you know, I, I can't hate on that. You know, Barbie was naked in Playboy, so that was her view, you know. Who wouldn't want to see a girl naked fight, you know, in a ring? So, I mean, I, I, would, I, would, never, I would never go that far, but, you know, if I have a pretty face and that's going to get people to watch me and, and respect me as a fighter, there's nothing wrong with that because I don't, I don't want to be ugly. So, you know, I can't help it. Well, you don't have to worry about me and Jeff. You know, we, we, we have no choice. But, yeah, I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, uh, and then, uh, what's that? You know, what I'm going to say is that the days of the women, the days of women, looking like men, in boxing, is not, nobody cares about that anymore. The kind of, the, the woman like Ava, that's what, at least, that's going to get the fans to tune in, and you know, and actually not only that, I mean, then that's when the women can get, you know, even get some endorsement deal because no one cares about the dyke, that you know, the woman that looks like a dude coming to the room. Nobody cares about that anymore. So I mean, right now, this is what this is what women's boxing has to be. It has. To be. The women have to look good. For well, anybody that we want to see him, nobody cares about the guy. The, the guy, you know, the woman that looks good. Nobody cares about that anymore. So, she's going to, you know, basically, where she's at right now is where boxing is headed. Well, you know, it's, it's kind of a tough thing because, you know, on the one hand, you know, you look at someone like Layla Ali because of her looks and obviously her talent and her name, but, you know, she was able to become so much more than just a boxer. And, and, and like you said, you know, it's, it's you know, People want to look at name, someone. They... Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Of course, she had everybody was just waiting for her to be successful because of her name. You know, don't get me wrong. She lived up to it, and she carried the torch great. She carried the name great. But what I'm saying is that the reason why women's boxing became big because you had Joe Frazier's daughter, you had Roberto Duran's daughter, you had um, Archie Moore's daughter, you had so many names of great fighters that actually all these women were fighting at the same time. So it's now all of a sudden, when you finally make the biggest fight you possibly can in, in name value, you know, Layla Ali against, um, 
Frazier's daughter. I forgot her name, but, you know, you make that fight. That's the biggest fight that could even happen in one box. You know, and don't get me wrong. I mean, of course, Layla did it. Layla was a great fighter. You know, I mean, I, I take my hat off to her because she was a woman that had no boxing experience at all. And she, yeah, and but the women, the fight. women today are way better than, than, you know, I think the women were at that time. And even, even where Layla Ali was, there's a lot of women right now that are way better than she is. I mean, don't get me wrong, and that may be true, but that woman ain't never going to see the money that Layla Ali made. Oh, yeah, so, you know, we all weren't blessed with that name. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's what I was saying. I, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't saying that there aren't women that are better. I was just saying that, you know, because of her name, all she had to do was carry the torch. Yeah. You know, that's even just like my just like my nephew. I mean, the name was way established long before he even came along, but... He didn't have to carry the torch. And once he carried the torch, you know, of course, now all of a sudden, you know, the spotlight is on you and, you know, you proved yourself. You know, and that's, and that's what happened with Layla. I mean, you know, he, I mean, she proved herself. And, and she actually walked away from the sport. And because she was already in Ali, and, of course, the help that she was attractive, that she got many, many endorsement deals right after that. You know, and that's something that maybe even you can get. You know, you're a very attractive young woman. So, I mean, maybe at some point in time in your career, I mean, you may start getting endorsements, and that's where probably a lot of your money will come from rather than from poverty. Yeah. Okay. What are you, Jeff? Are you in a bowling alley or something? Who? That ain't me. It's you. I'm with Carla. Is that Carla? Carla, is that you? Yeah, oh, I'm on mute. What? No. Carlos on you. <laughs> My no, phone was on mute. No, you didn't. So anyway, yeah, oh, um, I'm, I'm going to bring you in here in a second, Carl. Cause, yeah, the last thing I want to say about that, uh, Ava, is just, you know, it, you know, whether it's enforced or not, yeah, it does seem like ultimately, um, you know, the endorsement money and, and the big bucks fighting does come, you know, not only from the talent but from the appearance as well. So, you know, like I said, people like Leila Ali and that kind of thing and in and, and MMA, you know, you have the Gina Caranos and that kind of thing. So ultimately they do go hand in hand, but, uh, you know, it doesn't hurt when you, you have your talent and, uh, you know, that can take you to the next level. Yeah. All right. So, hey, Carla, so, so you've been on there not on mute for so long. I, I, do you want to jump in here and ask something? Oh, I can double duck in there now. Hey, how's it going, Ava? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. I have a question because I heard you earlier saying that you're um, doing more boxing in Mexico than you are the States because, you know, they have a little more enthusiasm about the sport. We'll put it that way. Is mm -hmm. it more lucrative with you doing, you know, more fights over there in Mexico than it is in in the state? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, do you get paid more. <laughs> yeah, do you get paid more? Yeah, in in Mexico because I mean the people are definitely more supportive than they are in the state. How does it well, fare for you? You know, in, in the states, I was getting paid garbage, and um, you know now that I have a great promoter in Mexico. And even in Mexico, Mexican, you know, pesos, I'm still getting paid. I'm getting paid great now, you know. I'm not making what what I should be, but, you know, I, I'm getting paid enough to keep myself and be comfortable and, and pay my bills. So, I, you know, to me, that, that's all I need. Mm-hmm. And are you doing anything, you know, like what? where do you see yourself in or how how long, what about longevity? Where do you see your, your career in the next five years or so? Well, you know, um, boxing right now to me is, is number one. Um, I quit everything. You know, I even went kind of homeless for a little while trying to box because I felt like this is what I wanted to do. I couldn't be like the other women who were working and, and trying to box at the same time. So, you know, I think the next five years, maybe up, up to maybe six or seven, I'm just going to work hard to, to stay number one and just, try and make a point to people in the United States that women can fight. You know, that's my main goal. Mm -hmm. Now, you said earlier that you kick ass. We know that. We see that. <laughs> now, I want to talk about your, your preparation for your fight. Do you spar with other females? Because there's not very many females that you can pretty much get in the gym with at any given time. Do you spar, uh, spar with females or males? You know, this fight was actually the first time I ever sparred some females before a fight. 
But uh, when we hit Mexico, 10 days before the fight, I was sparring a man, you know, and, and I mostly that's what I do. Mm -hmm. And sparring men is just, just, I think that's what all of us women have to do is because there's not a lot of women, like you said, you know, there's not a lot of us to go around. So so we just have to find some, some amateur. Like right now I've got my, my coach's son, and, and he's a great amateur. And I realize right now I might be beating him up, but once he turns that 18, <laughs> He's going to be beating me up, you know. So it's like, it's just like something all of us women have wait, to go wait. through when we find sparring partners. Uh, I'm sure was he seven. I'm sure a 17 year old boy is going to would uh, has other people he'd rather get beat or not rather get beaten up than uh, by Ava Knight. So I'm sure he's okay with that. <laughs> but uh, but I'm sure uh, you know. And the reason Jeff was defensive with Layla Ali earlier is because he used to get beat up by Layla. They used to spar together a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Well, well, I'm sparring, you know, the guys my size, you know, once they hit that age where they hit that man power, it's like I almost have to stop because, you know, they, they start to hurt me. <laughs> you, can't, right. you really can't compare a woman to a man when you're in the same weight. Mm -hmm. so, so, Jeff, have you ever, uh, I'm not sure, have you ever trained a woman? I, I, and how would you feel like training someone like like Ava? I mean, said she basically went homeless to, to, to be a boxer. I mean, how cool is that? I mean, it, you know, showing that she had the drive and, and the dedication to do it, so... Have you ever trained a female boxer before, and, and, and how would you like to work with someone like her if the opportunity ever presented itself? Yeah, I mean, I, I, trained, I trained Jessica with Kobe. I trained Jessica for the first three years of her career. I trained, um, um, I trained the rest of the So, I mean, I've trained, I've trained quite a few girls, you know. So, I mean, I trained, um, what's her name, Lashana. I forgot what the kind of class. I don't know her last name, but anyway, she never. She only fought one, one fighter, one professional fighter. Thing. So no, I had no problem training women. I mean, to be honest, women are easier to train than men because men have a preconceived notion of knowing something and they don't. You know, women basically turn them into what, what it is you're trying to do because they listen. Do we lose you? Uh -huh. All right. Um, yeah. So I mean, Ava, it was uh, you know, it was great having you on the show. Um, as, as far as like the social media and that kind of stuff, uh, I, I know we don't want to go to avanight.com. I Google it. You don't want to go there. But <laughs> as far as no. other stuff, <laughs> that would not be uh, the Ava Knight you guys would be looking for. Well, maybe it is, but not not, not the Ava Knight that's on not the in phone this now. Case. Yeah. Uh, as far as other things, where can the folks keep up with you on, on social media and that kind of thing? Uh, you know, you can follow me on Twitter at Ava underscore Knight and um, Facebook.com slash Official Ava Knight. And my website is OfficialAvaKnight.com. Um, you know, I do it myself. It's a little behind in the news. So if you do go look at it, it, it will be maybe a fight behind. <laughs> But, you know, that's where I'm at. All right, and then uh, just as far as, you know, you, your future goes, uh, you know, I guess you don't have anything right now, but, but what are you looking for in the immediate future and, and where can folks expect to, to see you in the, in the, in the near going? Uh, you know, um, my hope my hope is, is just to keep fighting the top girls. Um, you know, when I run out of flyweight girls, I'm going to move up and find the next weight class of girls. Um, you know, just like my record from the beginning, I'm going to keep them top class and, and, and make a name for myself. Yeah. Carla, do you have anything else for you before we wrap up the show? Um, you know what? I do have another question for Ava because you've accomplished a lot, in, you know, in, in your career thus far. But, you know, at what point, you know, during the course of your career did you feel like you finally, you know, kind of legitimized yourself as a fighter? Was it after you had, you know, was it any particular fight that you had, you know, completed, or at what point was it that you felt like you legitimized yourself? You know, for myself, I always felt like I was going to be a great fighter. Uh, it's, it's hard to say which fight it was. I think after I lost and I realized that I had fought 10 rounds hurt and not training for two weeks and still did my 10 rounds, and I thought that the round the cards were were off, but I, I, actually after losing, I think that's when I legitimized myself because I realized that even with, with all that I had done or hadn't done for that fight, I still made it through and, and sh 
you know, Anna Maria is top of the class, and she's, you know, she's going in the books for the Hall of Fame or in the WBC. So, you know, fighting someone like that and, and still coming out feeling like a winner, that's what it was. Right on. Good. Well, I appreciate you taking the time out to, to talk to us. I mean, it was, you know, and giving us, like, really candid answers. I was actually going through your your Twitter page, and I saw the, the poster with Floyd Mayweather standing there, and you put you said, Floyd, I'm, I'm, I'm coming for you. <laughs> well, everybody's calling out Floyd today, Jeff. We had Leonardo Tyner calling him out. Now we got Ava calling him out. <laughs> I'm coming, you know, everybody wants to call out Floyd to make that money, and so that's why I did it. I'm calling Floyd out right now. <laughs> I want my program. Well, you know, for that paycheck, I'll call him out right now, too. I promise I'll give everything I have for the five seconds of fight lasts, and, and I'll be happy to collect my paycheck. Um, so, yeah, Ava, anything else you want to add to the, to the folks, uh, you know, listening to your, to your fans? Uh, you know, I just want to say... Um, Hi, and thank you to all the fans that follow female boxing and know who I am and, and have looked me up. Um, you know, and give a shout out to my trainer, Ben Batista, and, and Kareem Mayfield, who just won on HBO out of the same gym. Um, yeah. You know, and my, and my promoter, Hector Garcia, for doing a great job with my career right now. And actually, I think Kareem was on the, our uh, ATG radio yesterday with our our sister show there with Frank Stea yesterday. So, um, yeah, we, we really appreciate you joining us. And, uh, you know, anything we can do to support you, you know, a big fan of yours. And, and we'd love to, to have you back on the show before or after your next victory. And uh, we'll be, plenty, be sure to do plenty on the site for you and, and keep the people aware of, of who you are and build your name out the best we can. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. All right. Well, you take care, Ava, and, and thanks so much for joining us. We look forward to talking to you again soon. All right. All right, thanks. All right, so that was uh, Ava Knight. Uh, like I said, she, you know, a little bit of shade of Floyd there. With the, the confidence was always great to see. Jeff, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Oh, I forgot mm. to let you dismiss her. I, I screwed up. <laughs> I'm going to dismiss you. <laughs> What's that? I'm going to dismiss you. <laughs> <laughs> I think Jeff's been dipping into the to the, the bag there. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, so it was a uh, great show tonight. Lenardo Tyner and, and Ava Knight, both great guests. Both had a lot to say. Uh, love to get both of them back again. Um, you know, again, our uh, sympathy to go out to the, the friends and family of Manuel Stewart. Uh, you know, a really tough loss for the boxing world in the last week. Um, great show tonight, Carla, as far as, you know, following you, where can the folks keep up with you? Definitely follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Both are the same, the real Carla J, and that's Carla with the C, J-A, and also on um, Facebook at uh, Carla J. Jeff, how about you? Where can the folks <laughs> keep up with you? <laughs> oh, my um, uh. <laughs> like an alley. Well, what you doing today? Oh, um, um, Oh, goodweed.com. You probably smoking that weed when you got in a car accident last week, probably. The good thing you didn't drug test, yeah. Um, now, Jeff, Jeff's on uh, Twitter at... Um, oh, yeah. You know what? You know that one. Go ahead. Come on. <laughs> this is sad, Jeff. I have to tell. You can follow Jeff on at Jeff Mayweather one on Twitter, and of course uh, Jeff Mayweather on, on on Facebook, and and like the boxing page, Jeff Mayweather's Pro Boxing Insider, and also uh, Pro MMA Insider on Facebook. Both those, and check them out. Uh, anything else, guys? Anything else you want to talk about before we wrap up the show? I think Jeff's probably missing a X Factor or whatever, so he's probably ready to go. So, anything else? No, I'm watching Hardcore Parlor. <laughs> <laughs> was that pawn or porn? Was that an A or an O? <laughs> That's a Texas accent coming out. It's just... <laughs> porn, 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 porn might be better, but I'm watching porn right now. <laughs> I'm gonna see if we can get. I'm gonna see if we can get Seth on the show, uh, Jeff, for you. Who? Seth Gold. Seth, who? Well, you obviously not a big fan of the show if you don't know who Seth is. Yeah, that's the sun. That's the sun. That's the sun. Yeah, I know. I know everybody on there. <laughs> All right. 
I like this show. I watch it every week. <laughs> every day, I mean, I'm on about three times, about three times a week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, anything else you want to add before we go? No, that's it. I want I want Jeff to, to send us off. All right. All right, we'll finish it up. Go ahead, Jeff. Send, send the show away. Bye. <laughs> One more time. Bye. <laughs>